When you've been coding for about a week or two, you'll eventually start to realize that you need a data structure called arrays. And what are arrays? Arrays are just a collection of data. Say you have a collection of numbers in your program and those numbers represent different test scores on an exam in your class. Then you may use an array to do the computation. Say you want to store some text in your program. Maybe it's someone's name or maybe it's a word or maybe it's a phrase or even a sentence. Then you'll need to use a char array to store that in your program. Say you're trying to build a to-do list application, which is a typical application for people who are just starting to learn how to code. And say you want to code that application and you have tasks in your to-do list, you'll need to have an array to represent those different tasks. So in this video, I'll be giving an introduction to arrays in C, and I'll be doing that by going over two simple programming examples, which are really classic and will really help you understand arrays and know how to use them in your programs. And knowing how to do arrays in C is really important, because if you can do that, you'll unlock a lot of potential in your programs and applications, and you'll be able to build more complex programs. And not just complex programs, but programs that actually add value to the world. I'm Henrik, and I'm here to help you learn the software skills and tools you need to grow in your software development journey. So let's get started. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects. And I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit Benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description and if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. Alright, so here's a program and I have three exam scores, 98, 75, 85 for three different students. And then after we assign those values for those exam scores, we print out the exam score. So let's run this. And there you go. So you see everyone's exam scores as it is displayed or as it is set in here. So this is how I used to program before I learned arrays. And you can start to see how complicated it's becoming. And as I add more exams to this program, it will become really complicated. Say I have 100 students. And that's, that's pretty typical in a college lecture hall. You can have 100 students. I don't want to be declaring 100 exams. So let's do something a lot nicer. So we'll just declare an array. So we'll have an array of exams. So let's, let's redo this. So first, this is called the declaration. So I'm declaring the array. So here we declare an array of integers with size 100. So this is how you say how large the array is. So there'll be, there, there's going to be 100 exams in, in this array. And there, the type of the array is int. So we have 100 ints that will represent student exams. So instead of doing this, we do this. All right, so this is how we access individual elements of the array. We use square brackets like, like it is in the declaration. And then we add, we add 0 to access the first array of the first element in this array. To access the second element of the array, we have to use one. And it's counterintuitive, but that's because we're starting with index value of zero. And this is called zero indexing. Let's change the 100 to three. Let's start with something simple first. So we have, if we do this, we're declaring it with size three. And basically we have three students, three student exams, and then we're setting each of the exams here. And this is called the initialization. If we do something like this, this is how we initialize or we're setting the initial value of the arrays. And then if you want to print it in our printf, we do this. So I just, I just add those in here. And so you can see it's starting to look pretty simple. It's starting to look a lot simpler than earlier. But if you see, if you do this, you'll get the same result. So, we're getting the same exact result, but our code looks a lot cleaner. And we can actually make this even more clean by doing this. We can initialize the array in the declaration. So now it looks even more clean. So now we're going to get the same result. So here, this is how we can initialize the values. We set the initial values of the array by doing this. And you have to make sure that 
the number of elements in this in these curly brackets is going to be the number here because if you do two and you try to run this you're gonna have some weird numbers here there's gonna be a warning when you compile it and run it it's gonna say index 2 is past the end of the array so you're actually going out of bounds you're going out of bounds of the array because the array is only if you put a 2 here the array only has two elements but here you're trying to access the third element but there is no third element because there's only two elements in this array and then there's another warning here it says you're you're adding 85 but I only have two elements in my array why are you adding 85 and you can actually make this code even simpler with using a for loop okay so I put it in a for loop so we have a print we instead of printing it three times we print it and then we instead of using the number 0 1 and 2 to access the first second and third elements of the array we can just use the i index when we do this for loop we'll use i because the first iteration i will be zero so you'll put zero here and you'll print it and then it'll go through again i will be one and then this will be one so it's kind of like what it what i had earlier so there you go you have the same output and our code looks a lot cleaner now the problem here is that it says student one's exam score every time instead of it being one two three so what we can actually do is we can put another percent d over here and then we'll use i instead or actually we'll do i plus one because i is going to be zero the first time but we want it to say one so it'll be one student one's exam score and then when i is one and we go through the for loop again it'll be one plus one and then so then it'll be it'll say two here so it'll say student two's exam score and then it'll look at the second element of the array and then it will print that so let's run this and there you go student one's exam student two's exam student three's exam so we had to add that i plus one because the first time like i mentioned earlier it's going to be zero and we don't want it to say student zero's exam we want it to say student one's exam so we have to add one here so you can start to see how helpful arrays are say if we had 100 students then we can initialize it here I'm not going to initialize it because that's too many numbers to put in but then you can see if we use this for loop we can print all 100 exam scores and see them all together so this is for int arrays so these arrays are integers the, the array is a collection of integers but we could actually do other things we don't have to use int we can use float for example or we can use double so we can use different data types and so in our next example we're going to do a char array and you need to do a char array in order to store words and text in your program okay so here i have a program where we declare a char array and a char array is just an array or a collection of char and we know char are just different characters so basically these are just like letters so we can declare a char array to represent a name and this array is a size has a size of 10 so next the program asks you to enter your name and then we do scanf and then we use percent s because this is going to be a string or this is going to be a word or, or a text so we're going to store we're going to use percent s it'll store whatever the user enters in and it'll store it inside name and then we'll do printf to make the program say the name back to the user all right so let's run this okay now let's enter my name Henrik okay there you go hello Henrik so I was able to store my name in there now let's say the name is our long name say it's something like Christopher so let's type in Christopher so Christopher has 11 letters so let's see what happens so actually it, it does work to an extent but then you get this error at the end zsh colon abort and that's because you're accessing it's kind of like earlier when you were at, when the program was access accessing data outside of bounds say we did 11 and let's run this and try Christopher again and we still get the error and that's because we store all of the letters but it's it actually looks like this when it's stored 
So you're going to store 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. But when you use scanf %s, it's also going to store this character here called the end of string character or the null character. And if you go to Wikipedia, you go to the documentation for scanf, and you scroll all the way to the bottom where for %s, it's going to tell you how %s works. So for %s, it scans a character string. So that's a character string. And then it'll store that character string, and then the scan terminates at white space. So that means if we were going to type Christopher Smith, like space Smith, it's not going to it's not going to scan in the Smith section because there's a space in between. So it's only going to scan in the Christopher, the first name, and then it's going to say it's going to have a null character stored at the end of the string. And then it says, it, this means that the buffer supplied must be at least one character longer than the specified input length. And what that just means is the buffer, which in our case is the array, the buffer that's supplied in scanf. So in this case, the buffer that's supplied in scanf is name. So name is the quote unquote buffer that is supplied. So name must be at least one character length longer than the specified input length. And the specified input length was Christopher. So Christopher is 11. So the buffer must be at least one character longer than 11. So in order to store Christopher into the name, into that name array, we need to have 12. We have to have, to have an array that is 12 characters long. So let's try that. So say we do 12 and then let's run that. Christopher, and there you go. So we don't get the error anymore. That's because we have enough, um, we have enough characters in our array to store that whole string. All right, let's see if we can try to combine these two ideas, the name and then the students. Let's try to combine them together. All right, so I've declared a two-dimensional array, and that just that means it's an array with two dimensions. It's not just one dimension. It's two dimensions. So we have one dimension for the students. So we have three students, and each student has 20 characters in their name, uh, with less than 20 characters in their name. So declare a 2D array for three students with names less than 20 chars long. So we declare it here, and then we're going to do like we did earlier. We're going to ask the uh, user to type in their students' names. So we'll use a for loop for that, and then we'll say, can you print your first student's name and then we'll use scanf to scan that in and then we're going to print their names. So you can really see it like this. There are three names, there are three student names, but each name is 20 characters long. We need to have this, we, this is why we need a two-dimensional array because, because we need a, another array to store the letters of their names. So all we need to do to refer to one of the student's names is to do this. We only have to do the first square brackets to get the first student name. And then we can do like we did earlier in the previous example. We can treat it like the previous example. If it helps you understand, we could even do something like this and see that's kind of like our example earlier, right? But we're just we're just going to have three of them. So that's why we're adding this other dimension to it. All right, so let's try that and I'll break it down even more if you still don't understand. So enter the student one's name and let's do John. Student two's name, Anna, and then student three's name is uh, Sam. And there you go. So student one's name is John, student two's name is Anna, student three's name is Sam. And so if you want more explanation on what, what's going on here, so we have a two-dimensional array. So it looks like this. We have three names, and then we have 20, we have 20 slots for each of them. So it looks like this when you when we declare it, it looks kind of like this. And I put the periods here. You know what I mean there. It means there's 20 of them. I don't want to put all 20. <laughs> so when you read the names from the user earlier, we did earlier we did John, Anna, and Sam. So what happened earlier was so this is what actually happened after we did the scanf. Then when we printed the names, it just printed this part up to the null character, and then likewise for Anna and likewise for Sam. And I'm referring to this part. So this part is the one that, that did that. I just want to note before we finish this tutorial, I usually wouldn't implement it this way. I would usually just create a struct and then the struct will have a name field. And if you don't know what a struct is, uh, you can watch my other video on that. I think using structs is cleaner and 
and you don't have to worry about two-dimensional arrays if you use a struct so that's why i would rather use a struct to do this but i'm just doing this just to give you a tutorial for arrays all right so that's an introduction to arrays and the arrays that kind of arrays that we did here are called static length arrays and that means the arrays cannot change lengths at all there's other arrays out there that if you once you start to understand arrays you might look into variable length arrays but variable length arrays is its own video so i'll talk about that some other time there'll be a point when you start coding with arrays and you want an array that is not the same length every time you want it to have a different length depending on when you're running their, your program maybe at runtime you want a different length so if you want me to go over variable length arrays just leave a comment below and i'll look at it and keep a note about that all right like i mentioned earlier if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start you can download my 30-day beginner coding challenge and it's a 30-day guide where i teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects it's really beginner friendly and i go step by step on how to build each one and go through the tutorials that you need to build each one so download that in the link in the description all right that's it for this week's video i went over an introduction into arrays and this should help you in that 30-day beginner coding challenge particularly the fourth project it'll really help you out and so if you have any other questions feel free to let me know in the comments section is there anything any other questions you have about arrays please let me know maybe there's something i missed let me know in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer you there. And if this video was helpful for you, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.